ऑन अ पर्सनल नोट मुझे कहना है कि कोयल कायरो का स्टोरी वेरी इंस्पायरिंग स्टोरी पच्चीस तीस साल बाद सोमा जी का मुँह से सुनने का सुनने में बहुत अच्छा लगा मुझे लगता है कि आ, मेरे जैसे लोग वो अस्सी पचासी के शुरुआत में राजनीतिक जीवन का शुरुआत किया था उस टाइम दो दिन स्टोरीज थे इंस्पायरिंग करने वाले एक था कोयल कारों का स्टोरी दूसरा था केरल का साइलेंट वैली प्रोजेक्ट का सो so, मुझे लगता है कि दिस वेर द स्टोरीज वी हैव लिव्ड विथ सो सलाम टू यू सो अवर ग्रुप ए सॉरी वेर इज देश सॉरी अवर ग्रुप डिस्कस्ड ऑन दिस ऑल कम्युनिटी इनिशिएटिव और वाट आई कॉल कम्युनिटी लेड इनिशिएटिव फॉर कॉन्फ्लिक्ट रेसोल्यूशन ऑन रिवर्स Uh, we have tried to structure the presentation three parts, and I know the time is not enough. So the first part is that the type of uh, narratives, uh, different types of narratives around conflicts and conflicts resolutions uh, among the participants on the group is very very rich discussions we had, and that also brings in the whole complexity of the whole conflicts we talk about, because the moment we use the word community or community led, there is a danger to you know only talk about or get into some type of localism uh, in type of thing issues are much complex and things so i think these narratives bring that rich content and the complexity and heterogeneity of the conflicts and things the second part is that what are the learnings each of these narratives bring in so there's a small section called uh, uh, the learnings and the third part is uh, which i think manoj has been stressing uh, what is the type of take home message from the group's work so there's one slide on that so that's a broadly the way we have structured it uh so uh, i'm not going to elaborate on this type of thing the type of uh, conflict resolution or conflict uh, conflict resolution narratives and context i mean that context is very important when we talk about uh, community or community led uh, you know resolution process and things for example we had one experience about an area water partnership which was formed in kanpur around ganga and how the whole exercise failed because uh, even two years this whole area partnership could not even meet because the large, some of the larger players did not come on table Uh, for the uh, discussions and things the whole issue of institutional fragmentation was brought into that context we had another case uh, story from uttarakhand kumaon i mean especially very interesting thing about a kumaon uh, water rules which was formulated in 1935 which actually regulated uh, the whole water use and the imposition of an act called the jal nigam act of 1975 how it affected Uh, impact on the whole community led uh, institutions and processes and type of thing and it brought in a very different type of dimension so the whole conflict over existing customary rules regulations and practices and institutional spaces and how take certain things gets imposed from top and they don't meet each other leading to conflicts and things so there are a whole lot of interesting scenario of that type of thing which is there in the uh, uh, thing one is this uh, uh, ngt experience was brought in narmada conflict of uh, whether it is in the state and also between conflicts where the state and the vested interest try to create a conflict between the so called beneficiaries versus the in you know, affected people they are all communities and things um in the question of uh, for example um, a case of um, a, um, a pollution in fact there was a conflict between the workers in that factory and the community around and where the community took a stand that i mean they pleaded before the court saying that in your order please don't say ki close down the factories but how do you restructure the functioning of the factory itself how then different interests can bring together to have a coin and so how do you uh, um, you know explore possibility that of that type upstream downstream conflicts the issue of privatization and shivnath which was brought in indravati which has an interstate conflict uh, mahanadi where whole lot of series of barrages are being created today and uh, water being trans, you know using for different purposes the whole competing uh, conflicting water uses um in fact there's another interesting story of leasing the ganga river stretch about 80 km uh, type of thing by different uh, land mafias or uh, zamindars or uh, pani dhar uh, type of thing which is happening and um, how there was a movement against that type of thing then there was a much more uh, self regulated system through the jal shramik sang which was formed there but with the creation of the uh, vikramshila gangetic dolphin sanctuary how the whole process got set back again because the local fishermen were denied their rights to fish there they were turned into criminals lot of commercial interests uh, brought in there so the whole cycle got uh, reversed there chambal was again an interstate water distribution increasing demand of water sand mining 
and also conversion of the ravines into different type of land uses and other things. Um, I think from Himachal, I think again there was the case of hydropower plants especially coming up in a big manner and the whole issue of uh, cumulative impact assessments, dilution of the whole processes, conflicts around the way it is being done and that also case it brought in how uh, inputs from outsiders or technical experts can actually strengthen uh, the local communities in their struggle against uh, some of these uh, projects or other type of thing, how we can have a better articulation uh, in this. We also had a story of uh, Yarala River, which is a tributary of the Krishna Basin, where there was an interesting struggle on sand mining. But that struggle took up a very positive articulation or articulation of an alternative with the people, in which the whole, I mean, some of you might have heard about uh, one of the first initiatives by the people themselves to create a small dam called a Baliraja Dam on that thing, which has become a symbol of equity, equitable water access and things, and that stopped the sand mining further from there and things. Kaveri family, actually, Janagarajan is not here, in which the entire uh, conflict around Kaveri took place, MIDS, that is the Madras Institute of Development Studies, especially led by Janagarajan, tried to bring in farmers from both uh, the contending states, that is Karnataka and um, uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, on a platform, they shared experiences, they visited each other and things, and one of the positive outcomes of that, the type of violence which was there earlier, in fact, did not take place after the family, uh, family started. But interestingly, after the tribunal verdict came, the type of processes they had put in, in fact, they had also come up with a water sharing formula among the farmers, but that did not get reflected in the official tribunal functioning. So the issue brings in that when you have community-led or that type of processes, which is moving in parallelly, how do you legitimize that process in your overall decision making is an important learning from that. We also brought in the issue of uh, Subansri, where I think the whole conflict between Assam and the downstream state and things. So what I'm trying to say is that through this type of very interesting narratives, the whole complexity of the conflicts around our rivers was brought in. I'm sure most of you are also living with such uh, uh, examples and things. Now, what are the type of learnings we have? Now, it's not that these learnings we have some type of consensus within the groups. I'm, we are just narrating what are the learnings each of these case studies has brought. One, when we talk about community, I think there are two things important to park here. One is the heter heterogeneity, and I'm not saying heterogeneity in terms of differentiation, but there's also a power relation between the communities and typothesis, so we need to disconstruct, deconstruct the community to some extent, the complexity. And when you talk about the word community here in a riverine context, there's a scale to it. I mean, it's not only one small village or a micro watershed community, it also means that conflicts unfold at different scales. And when we talk about community or riverine or riparian communities, it also moves across that scale. So that is one thing which you need to understand. <laughs> Second issue, insight or learning was that the whole issue of institutional fragmentation. So there was an argument that any type of reform, any type of change should be led by the top. That was one argument which was brought in. Third, Individual and community initiative also scaled up and found legal remedies before courts and tribunals. So there was also counter-narrative to the learnings from that side. When the state initiates new policies and laws, they should take into account the existing customary practices, institutions and norms, because that was very clearly articulated, I think in a couple of cases this insight came that, and this is I think after the 90s, the type of reforms which is taking place, I think is not taking into account that. I can stop it. Yeah, so uh, then uh, another important thing was that when you talk about resolution, resistance and political mobilization to organize the community and force the state to negotiate is the first step to do it. Because very often the state doesn't come to even negotiate with the communities on this issue. So unless you politically mobilize, organize, uh, and things, this, you know, this nice negotiation or dialogues very often do not take place. It can be messy. Another uh, insight is that need for scientific inputs from intelligence. Yeah, there are about three, four cases which stress that because the universities got into, started working with the communities, brought into a little more what you call, you know, disciplinary knowledge or scientific knowledge along with the people's experience and knowledge and things, that did strengthen the case a better. So how do you, uh, you know, communities and, you know, experts or, uh, I mean, uh, intelligence work together? In that context, we also talked about the role of the media uh, sometimes in doing this. Community initiatives can try and resolve the conflicts among the communities created by the state and Western interests on complex issues. In fact, that's a little larger sentence which I'm saying. Uh, basically, that type of movements which we have should be able to reconcile some of the conflicts around, you know, the conflicts which are created by the state or other Western interests among uh, you know, toiling communities and type of thing. How do you bring in uh, commonality of interest? How do we support each other's struggles and things so that you don't just post these communities. And in many of the anti-dam struggles, we have seen this uh, taking place. 
um, strengthen and uh, strengthen the marginalized communities and the organizations. And also as part of the conflict resolution process, how do you explore alternatives? And very often I think if you can create spaces for alternative alternatives to come, then probably some of this uh, contending uh, you know, in, it can be taken care of. Then we talk about access to reliable data, information, uh, need to legitimize the community-led resolution processes. How do you it find a legal space in that? Otherwise, it moves parallelly. Uh, so I just come to the last slide, which is the take-home message, which is a consensus statement. So I read it out. This um, um, India Review Week gave us an opportunity to discuss, understand, and recognize the complexity, diversity, and heterogeneity of conflicts around rivers. These conflicts often end up in courts for redressal. The experiences and struggles reveal limitations of this process, or in this process, thus raising the question of whether courts, tribunals are adequately equipped to redress the conflicts. It also recognized that there are several community evolved and driven resolution mechanisms sometimes in the form of customary practices. These are often, very often co-opted or sabotaged by vested interests and inappropriately mandated state agencies and laws. Finally, we need to search for policy, legal and institutional avenues for legitimizing these resolution practices, which I call the community evolved uh, practices, and also frame alternative mechanisms. I mean, we also need to go beyond some of the community-led or community evolved practices and argue for or frame alternative mechanisms within a normative framework of social justice, sustainability, equity, and democracy. So this will be our uh, message to the group. Yeah, thanks. what we find one of the serious concerns and also very difficult to handle is the, con the conflict uh, coming out of the within the affected community which is because of the influence of the government you know through whatever state machinery and whatever means no so that is one of the uh, uh, most important uh, quite difficult thing but then of course we try to it's an ongoing process and uh, there is an ongoing effort uh, trying to use the traditional body and also you know try to engage in different other process uh, the second part of the conflict uh, in our case is we, what you find is the the militarization of the dam area, you know, dam site, and also the, the affected area. So, like in Manipur, as you know, that we have the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, you no, know, 1958, and under that, to counter the underground groups, uh, there is this military, uh, the deployment of the Indian Army in Manipur, you know. But then, what you find is like this: Armed Forces are no longer used to combat the underground groups or insurgent groups, you know. But then. These are also deployed in the dam site area and also those, you know, those uh, whom they feel as, uh, you know, threats or whatever. So it often led to an additional aspect of conflict. And in fact, in, there are series of events where, in, like in 2008, uh, when, uh, you know, there was a protest rally and, you know, several people were beaten up and, you know, and also it led to surveillance, you know, unnecessary surveillance and uh, occupation of the, uh, the community areas, you know, including schools, for example. So in case, uh, from that perspective, our one of our demand is also to see, the uh, demand is to demilitarize, uh, you know, uh, our, our, our areas, you know, including the dam affected area. So demilitarization of our land, the Muppet Hill Dam area or the Paimung Dam area is one of the uh, concrete demands that we come up, you know. And along with that, we also try to use the human rights mechanism. Mm. Like because, like in, in, the, in the last three days discussion, we hardly mentioned anything about human rights, you know. Because when you talk about defending a river, it's not just about the river per se, you know, it's about defending our land, it's about defending a future, you know, ultimately the human rights dimension of the community which are affected by the large scale and unsustainable and all sort of profit oriented, whatever form of development, you know, I think um, uh, in our context at least we uh, engage uh, human rights mechanism a lot, you know, at the Manipur level, at the India level and at the international level as well, yeah, thank you. Yes, as, as uh, 
हमारे एक ग्रुप के तो सब सब बातें आ गई हैं क्योंकि मुझे आज रात को भागना है कुछ सवाल मन में ले जाके मेरे ख्याल में ब्लड प्रेशर बढ़ाना ठीक नहीं इसलिए मैंने जाते जाते मैं में एक पहली बात मैं जोड़ना चाहता हूँ जो कहीं जुड़ सकती है पूरे उसमें सिक्सटी uh, में सी की मदद से हिमालय के कुछ ग्लेशियरों में न्यूक्लियर डिवाइसेज डाले गए थे न्यूक्लियर डिवाइसेज डाले गए थे और हमारे माउंटेनियर्स का इस्तेमाल किया गया था इवन ओवर गवर्नमेंट वॉज नॉट एबल टू डू दैट दिस इज बीइंग डन इन द आर हिमालय जो नंदा कोट में जो डिवाइस डाला था वो तो निकाल दिया गया था लेकिन नंदा देवी में जो डिवाइस डाला गया था वो स्टिल अंडर द ग्लेशियर लाइक द बॉडीज ऑफ मैनी माउंटेनियर्स देर माउंटेनियर्स की बॉडी तो निकल आएंगी और ठीक ठाक निकलेंगी फिर दोबारा उनको हम देख सकते हैं लेकिन न्यूक्लियर डिवाइस वहाँ कभी अगर वो एक्टिव हो गया वो कुछ कर सकता है और ये जहाँ पर है वहाँ से ऋषि गंगा निकलती है विच कम्स टू वेस्टर्न धोली विच कम्स टू आलकनंदा देन गंगा देन फाइनली बंगाल की खाड़ी तक उसका संबंध आता है मतलब हमारी नदियों या हमारे पर्वतों से ऐसे खेलने का हक किसी को नहीं दिया जाना चाहिए मैं उसके माध्यम से ये बात कहना चाहता हूँ और डैम भी प्रकारांतर में उसी तरीके की स्थिति है दूसरी बात मेरा निवेदन यह है कि नदियाँ एक खास तरीके के विज्ञान को और खास तरीके की कलाओं को विकसित करती रही है एक खास तरीके का साइंस इंडिजिनस और एक खास तरीके का जिसको कहेंगे कि आर्ट्स जो है तरह तरह के वो हमारे नदियों से जुड़े हुए हैं और वो नदियों का एक्सप्रेशन भी है एट द सेम टाइम वो एक तरीके से नदियों के होने के कारण हमारी सोसाइटी की क्रिएटिविटी के एक्सप्रेशन भी हैं तो उनको हम किस तरीके से नदी से जुड़ें अगर नदी ना हो तो वो गीत ना हो अगर नदी ना हो तो वो पुल बनाने की वो कलाएँ नहीं हो जैसे अरुणाचल में रिंगाल का पुल बनता है या कहीं लकड़ी का पुल अगर नदी ना हो तो नाव की कला न हो अगर नदी ना हो थोड़ी देर के लिए बहुत सारी और चीज़ें और विधाएं ना हो जो नदी के कारण हमें मिली हमारे यहाँ एक पूरा वर्णकुलर आर्किटेक्चर नदी के साथ है पूरे हिमालय में जो कैनालों के रूप में नौलों के रूप में बाबड़ियों के रूप में आया है और उनमें हमारी पूरी माइथोलॉजी को एक तरीके से नदी के माध्यम से पानी के माध्यम से डिफिक्ट किया गया है और अगर ये नदी का सिस्टम न हो पानी का सिस्टम न हो तो ये सब तरीके की जो एक्सप्रेशन है वो हमारे सामने नहीं आएंगे तो इनको भी कहीं हम एड्रेस करेंगे वैसे हमारे पिछले सेशनों में वो आए हैं एक तीसरा छोटा सा पॉइंट है जिसको मैं बताना चाहता हूँ कि जो हमारे यहाँ कन्फ्लिक्ट हैं कभी कभी कम्युनिटीज में भी आपस में होती हैं सुलझा लेते हैं वो और इतने हज़ार साल से वो साथ रहते हैं वो सुलझा लेते हैं बहुत बार अपस्ट्रीम डाउनस्ट्रीम के कॉन्फ्लिक्ट भी हैं वो भी सुलझा दिए जाते हैं हम नहीं सुलझा पाते हैं तो नदी उसको सुलझा देती है लेकिन हाल के सालों में पिछले डेढ़ सालों में अंग्रेजों के आने के बाद जितने कन्फ्लिक्ट आए हैं वो कम्युनिटीज़ के द्वारा पैदा किए गए नहीं हैं वो स्टेट के द्वारा पैदा किए गए हैं और अभी जिनको हम झेल रहे हैं भुगत रहे हैं और हमारे बड़े भाई जो झारखंड से आए हैं आ, उनकी कहानी आपने सुनी होगी वो सबके सब कन्फ्लिक्ट सब हमारे ऊपर थोपे गए कन्फ्लिक्ट से हैं तो ये एक साफ साफ बात उससे सामने आ रही है उसका कोई विकल्प नहीं है लड़ाई के अलावा जन आंदोलन के अलावा और जन आंदोलन के कितनी सारी भाषाएं कितने सारे मिजाज हो सकते हैं और एक बड़ी बात इसमें यह भी आती है कि हम जो भी इतना विकसित जिसको कहेंगे कि विचार यहाँ प्रकट कर रहे हैं वो किस तरीके से हमारी भाषाओं में और उस जलागम की भाषाओं में छोटे छोटे बुकलेट के रूप में या फिल्मों के रूप में या किसी भी और रूप में पोस्टर के रूप में हमारे लोगों तक जाए हालांकि वो समाज पोस्टरों का मोहताज नहीं होता है लेकिन फिर भी हम जो नया लिटरेचर नई चीज़ आती है वो उनके यहाँ ले जाए ये आखिरी बात यहाँ पर मैं ख़त्म करना चाहता हूँ विकल्पों की बात जारी रहनी चाहिए क्योंकि विकल्पों की बात अगर जारी नहीं रहेगी तो हमारे ही समाज का एक बड़ा हिस्सा सक करने लगता है एक बड़ी विडम्बना ये है कि जिसको हम कहते हैं कि राज्य व्यवस्था ने ये हम पर थोपा है वो राज्य व्यवस्था बकायदा इलेक्टेड तरीके से आई हुई है और बहुत बड़ी जनता के बड़े हिस्से ने उनको समर्थन दिया है पिछली हो कि अगली हो या उसके बाद जो आएगी इसलिए आ, बहुत मुश्किल है जो खलनायक इतने आसपास हैं कि किसी जन आंदोलन को खड़ा करना बहुत मुश्किल होता है और हमारे सबसे ज़्यादा पार्टिसिपेटरी जन आंदोलन जिसको कहेंगे हम पराजय में तो नहीं गए लेकिन अभी उसके बहुत सकारात्मक बहुत निर्णायक परिणाम भी नहीं आए हैं इसलिए आ, ये वाला हिस्सा भी सोचना चाहिए कि हम विकल्पों की बात भी निरंतर उस पर करें और इवन हम विकल्पों को इन्वेंट करने का जोखिम भी उठाएँ धन्यवाद Can we? I think let us close it. I think we overshot our time. I want to raise one issue. Just half a second. One thing we have not discussed is the uh, the target. Uh, 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 mentioned by the national forest policy of 1985 where 33% of the land area should be covered with forests and trees now why we can't use that as one of the events in our argument i i did not see any uh, discussion on that point and i haven't seen 
any discussion on that in any literature uh, during last 10 years i don't know why what's the reason i would like to understand and another there is another very uh, uh, difficult uh, perspective of dam decommissioning of my knowledge in new zealand a dam was determined to be unsafe after 35 years of service when a revised seismological data was available but after a lot of uh, difficulties and analysis you can imagine how much it would happen there they decided that dam cannot be decommissioned for some social reasons and they poured 200 million dollars into strengthening the dam though the return on the dam would never be equal from the uh, equated to the cost from the energy that is generated so there are some very serious issues what i my submission is we have to take this into account before we agree for any dam because you know, decommissioning of dam can become very very difficult in our indian conditions thank you, thank you. I think uh, we will go to discussion. Uh, the co-chair has... Yeah, only one point I want to mention with reference to the legal intervention. There are also very creative number of intervention in which we think in terms of not just project, in terms of policies, because also there is a need to dialogue with the judiciary on number of policies, because they, when they go back to their home, they should feel that all is not well. So in that sense, also there are a number of petitions lying in various courts where people are trying to argue. And second is also sometimes it's difficult for us as a community or as an organization, as a people to uh, build up certain data which are very crucial one. So there are also various uh, legal interventions made in past and also uh, presently going on various court where we try to gather information and data and we force state and institution to bring and collect the data under the supervision of the Supreme Court or High Court so that those data can be used in future. So that also we should keep in mind when we talk about legal intervention. Thank you. Uh, I don't want to add any comments, but you have said the song of Geet, can we do it with this song? Are you going to sing? Come on. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes, good evening. हमारा नारा जो है जल जंगल जमीन हमारा है और पहाड़ों और नदियों से हमारा देश इसको छेड़ो नहीं हम छोड़ेंगे नहीं इसी पर आधारित है ये मुंडारी गीत इसको बहुत ही दो लाइन का है छह लाइन का है लेकिन मैं दो ही लाइन आप लोगों को सुनाता हूँ आप लोग सुन लेंगे एक लाइन उसके बाद आप भी साथ दे सकते हैं बुरुरे बुरुरे मानी दो बेड़ा रे बेड़ा रे राई यही टोन है बुरुरे बुरुरे मानी दो बेड़ा रे बेड़ा रे राई हाय रे हाय बेड़ा रे बेड़ा रे राई और एक बार बुरुरे मानी दो बेड़ा रे बेड़ा रे राई हाय रे हाय बेड़ा रे बेड़ा रे राई या लोग पे सीधे या मानी दो या लोग पे टू सायराय है रे है या लोग पे टू सायराय बुरुरे बुरुरे मानी दो बेड़ा रे बेड़ा रे राय थैंक यू Uh, are, ek, uh, it is my pleasure duty to thank all the conveners as well as the chair and the co-chair. Uh, now, our key event is going to be prepared for a little bit. In that because dinner is included, so I will forgive you. At this time, there is no tea for you. Because they are doing the dinner for dinner. Uh, पर हमको यहाँ से डिस्पर्स होना पड़ेगा 
क्योंकि इस रूम को थोड़ा सा टाइट टाइडी अप होना है तो हम डिस्पर्स होके एंड इन अनदर 15 मिनट्स लेट अस कम बैक एंड सेटल बैक प्लीज थैंक यू वेरी मच अच्छा एक एक मैं अनाउंसमेंट एक मैं अनाउंसमेंट करना चाहता हूँ कि बिहार में यहाँ के इंडिया रिवर्स वीक दिल्ली को देखकर बिहार से जो हमारे साथी लोग आए हैं उन्होंने ये डिसाइड किया है कि वो बिहार में अपना इसी प्रकार का एक तनावपूर्ण नदियों के नदियाँ तनाव में ये कहते हुए एक वहाँ पर सम्मेलन करना चाहते हैं 